I'm Dr. Flux, and today we're looking at a really cool project I've been working on for the past couple months. This right here is the ABR2, but this one's been modded quite a bit. Now, if you'd like to purchase something like this, you can go on Etsy and check out the Saber. This, however, is quite different. That version online has a, a solenoid and it shoots single fire, so semi-automatic, and it fires one long dart at a time. I wanted to take this a step further. First off, I wanted this thing to take half darts. Secondly, I wanted this thing to be full auto. So I'm calling this thing the fluxed version of the ABR. So in this video, I'm gonna show what I did in here. I'm gonna basically go over my wiring diagram, take it outside, get some chronograph readings, and then do some accuracy checks. And we'll be doing all that with this really cool out of darts Taiachi mag. This thing is crazy. Look at the size of that thing. There's a normal mag. So let's jump right into the video. Now the ABR is pretty much designed right off of the Magpul PDR. And what is a Magpul PDR? It is basically a personal defensive rifle and it's very tight and compact and that's why it has this kind of, almost like a P90 type of look. The only difference is like we're feeding a mag in the bottom, which I really like. This feeding system seems to be a little bit more reliable. That's why I kind of prefer it over like a P90. The ergo on this thing is just beautiful. That's another reason why I love it. Your hands just kind of fit into place and it feels amazing. I will be taking this to a close combat range this weekend. So that's why I wanted to finish this build. So yeah, really excited how this turned out. Let's go ahead and dive into the inside of this thing and let me show you how it actually functions. So here we have the circuit. Now, the way this is set up, this is a dual stage trigger, which means when as soon as this thing opens, it turns on the flywheels. I'm also gonna start at the rev since the circuit kind of works this way. Obviously, you know, batteries over here, but the way I have this set up is you have to have all this stuff. Basically, this has to be open, this has to be pressed in, and then that allows for the cam switch to even work. I also put quick disconnects on this so I can easily take this out of the blaster, work on it, maybe even change out like the flywheel assembly or even switches or the back cam group. Also, I wanted to basically document this. So if you would like to see a full circuit diagram of this, uh, look at my Facebook. I'll put a link in the description. So like I said, uh, as soon as you pick up, as soon as rev is released, the flywheel start. So basically this wire here then gives this switch power so that when you pull the trigger, it then kicks that power over to pulse width modulation. So what that does is it basically controls the speed in which this rotates and how many times it rotates, as you can see here, when it's open, this switch is open and then it closes and it presses it. So you can basically control the, the speed in which that happens. I found that you need this PWM. If you don't have it, the solenoid will just, it won't do full cycles. It'll just like go like this. You need it to full extend. So the PWM is actually extremely important for this build. Also, it helps you dial in the perfect fire rate. I had to put a lot of hot glue on the bottom because I kept breaking my leads. So Remember, hot glue is great for securing very delicate leads, so just kind of cover it, encase it in hot glue. Just be careful when you're covering motors, because if it gets into the actual motor housing, then it will stop the motor from working.
But that's pretty much it. It's not super complex. Uh, what I would love to do is figure out how to gear this in a way where it fires three and then it waits until you press the trigger again so I could simulate a mechanical three round burst. Let's talk about the actual shell here. There's a lot of tweaking and modification that went into this. I'm starting to realize I really should learn how to do 3D design work because there's a lot of stuff I wanted to tweak on this aside from cutting it and adding, you know, putty and sanding it and putting it back together. It would make a little bit more sense if I could actually design the parts. This is a good example here. This barrel, I pretty much had to rework the whole thing. I'm finding for accuracy on this design, the tight barrel just was horrible. A lot of fly reelers in general seem like as soon as they fire out, like you don't want any barrel. It just seems like you get way better accuracy depending on the flywheel system. And if you need it to shoot straight, it's you might as well look at the alignment of the flywheels and just make sure everything's aligned straight. The barrel doesn't seem like it really helps too much in that regard. So that's why I went with the wide tube. Even this barrel right here will actually limit the potential of the dart because the best performance I got was actually just having these flywheels right here with no barrel. So they just sat in there and this whole channel was open. That was the best performance I got out of this blaster. So that's why that new design, the Cage Fighter, which is essentially a very chopped down with a short nose is such a good design because you just don't introduce any drag. Another part I had to change was the trigger. I had to cut it down. So as you can see, it's, it's just been chopped crudely but it works and then i put a little bar in here to kind of secure it all in place so i'm not going to show assembly because it is very simple essentially you just slide in the the solenoid here in the back i for now i just been shoving this whole cam assembly just in this back tray down here and then up here you mount the flywheels throw in your couple switches and then this entire barrel just drops on like so, and then you just throw in some screws or some uh, M M3 hardware. So let me put this blaster back together and we'll take it outside and get some actual range and chronograph numbers. So let's take a look at the FPS. Now inside we have Kraken motors with containment crew wheels. Let's check it out. And this is on 3S. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with those FPS numbers because this is more for close combat. So for what I'm using this for is more for uh, close engagements. So I don't really want to hit people at 150 FPS. So having it around 110, 120 is actually perfect for what I intend to do with this. Let's go ahead and see how accurate it is. I still can't get over this magazine. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Out of Darts. Head on over to Out of Darts and pick up a Taiachi mag. These things are amazing. So in conclusion, I am very excited with this blaster. I don't know if I'm gonna do any more of these. This is definitely something I don't wanna basically build and sell until the 3D files get modified or if I can maybe start learning how to tweak something like this. I really would like to just go from the ground up and design my own blaster. And I think it would probably have kind of a feel like this, maybe more in line with what the actual Magpul PDR looks like. 
I'd probably just kind of lean more into those design choices because I really like that thing. Overall, the FPS numbers were spot on for what I was looking for. The crush inside here is not too drastic. So that's why we can kind of get the consistent 110 to 120 FPS range, which is perfect for what I want to use this for. It wouldn't be too hard to add a little crush in there and get higher numbers. I also want to talk about the rate of fire real quick. As you can see, it's not extremely fast and I actually turned it down a little bit and that's about the speed I'm looking for. It can go a little bit faster and still perform reliably, but I found the faster you go, it just kind of increases the chance of having an issue or a jam or a feeding issue. So I found that's a really sweet spot for me in particular, but you can tweak this to go a little bit faster. Also, I'm using a cheap solenoid. I recommend using the Flywheel of the World solenoid. You're gonna get way better performance out of that. Well, I wanna thank you for watching this video. Please comment down below what you think about this design. Do you like these type of designs? Do you want me to see more stuff like this? Also, I'm open to any suggestions on how to make this a solid three round burst platform for a low cost. I'm really looking forward to creating a build that I can kind of repeat that basically is solenoid driven, takes a brushed system, and essentially just does three round burst because that's ideally what I want for this is just three round burst every time. I don't even care about select fire at this point, especially with these Taiachi mags. These things are really cool. If you would like to support my channel, use my added darts affiliate link, head on over and grab some of these because they are really cool. I actually grabbed another one today. I also want to make special note that this product was sent to me for free by Luke so that I can do some testing with his. Well, I'm Dr. Flux and that pretty much wraps up my build guide of the Nerf PDR. Mm -hmm.